guys, it's Elena, and I'm so excited today that I can introduce you to my brand new set of brushes for Procreate, and it's called Painterly. I've chosen this term because this, this brush set is full of brushes that basically have vis visible um, brush strokes in them, and it's all about the texture and the color. So I'm really excited to dive right in. This brush, th this video is for anyone who has bought the brush set. Um, anyone who is interested in just browsing to find out what's in the brush set as well. So I will go ahead and start by showing you how to load brushes in Procreate. And I do have a much uh, more detailed video about this that I will link to up in the top right corner if you need more help with that. But just briefly, once you have downloaded the files um, from wherever you have bought them from Creative Market, Gumroad, Etsy, etc. Um, they will be on your iCloud Drive downloads. And if you've downloaded from Dropbox, which will be those of you who have bought from Etsy, um, it could go into the On My iPad folder as well. But um, generally it will go into your iCloud Drive downloads folder. And you'll see that it's a zip file. And now that uh, iOS uh, 13 and 14, they support zip files we don't need any of the third-party apps anymore so if your zip file is opening up in a third-party app you just want to go ahead and delete that app because you don't need it anymore and it could cause a lot of errors so you want to just do this within the files app and the zip file here you just tap on it and then it gets unzipped so then tap on that folder and you'll see that within this folder there are two brush set files there is the canvas and texture and the painterly brush set and then all the rest of these are swatches. And I've, I've got a lot of swatches included that are based on um, classic painters like Monet and Renoir and Van Gogh. And to open these in Procreate, you should just be able to tap them and get that little import button. And then the swatches will go into your palettes. And then you, you just scroll down and they should be at the they should be at the bottom, actually. They'll go straight to the bottom. So when you load brushes, they go to the top. When you go load swatches, they go to the bottom. So anyway, that's how to load the swatches. This is the one I just loaded. So I'm gonna go back to my files and show you how to load the brush set. I'll just go ahead and tap on the painterly. You might get a little bit of a waiting thing there, especially if um, you have a slower, older iPad, but just give it time and it should load and then just scroll down on the brush list and then it should be there at the top. And I've actually got two because I already had this loaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Okay, so the two different brush sets included are the canvas and texture and the painterly. And the canvas and texture is just, it's not ones that you paint with, these are pattern brushes. So that's why I've separated them to make it a bit more clear and easy to get to the brushes that you want within the other set. So what you do with the canvas we've just got a couple different varieties of canvas i really like the clay board and that's actually what i really like that one it's got a really nice texture but then we've also got some some different kinds of canvas this is the linen canvas so the way that you would apply this is that you apply it on a new layer and most people make this layer above everything in their their procreate uh, document um, in this one i've actually made the canvas layer in between some some of the painting is down here some of it's up here um, i'll actually show you why here turn that one off okay so so this one has got for instance right here you can see the canvas is over top and right here it's the painting that's over top so it's kind of up to you if you want your um, your brush strokes to just really stand out on top of the canvas, or if you want them to sort of have the canvas marks on it already. So that's completely up to you, but I'll show you how to apply a canvas. Okay, so I've got this new layer that I've made and tapping on the N, you can go up and change the blend mode to multiply. And you can also change the opacity, but we'll look at that in just a minute after I put the canvas texture on. And actually, let me just, yep, those are turned off. Okay, so we have no canvas texture right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the standard canvas. And just so you know, I do have a large version of most of these, and this is just depending on 
what size your document is. So if you're making a really big, you know, 16 by 20 inch piece of artwork that is going to print out at that size, um, you'll want to use large. But for, for smaller pieces, like this one is 3000 by 2000 by 2000 pixels, just standard is fine. So I'm going to choose the standard canvas. I have black selected in my color palette. Very important. If you choose like a white, then nothing at all shows up really. So double tap here for black and then just cover that whole screen. And I've got this turned all the way up. And so you can see, I've got this nice canvas texture in here and you might want to leave it like that. Or if that's a bit too harsh, you can go and tap the M here, change the opacity so that it's not quite as visible. So you can see that's barely there. So that is the canvas texture and below all of these different canvas textures, I've got some rather special ones. I've got primed canvas one and two, and then I've got add stroke texture and then a large version of that and then add swirl texture. And these primed canvas ones are, I'll show you what they look like here. I want to go ahead and clear that one and I'll go ahead and put this in here just so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So this puts in a texture that looks like it's sort of been painted on already. And, and I call it primed canvas because it's like, if you have spread the canvas with gesso or um, made it ready with some texture and there's two different versions of that. I can show you another um, piece that I've made to show you how it looks on a piece. So here's where I've, I've put one of my primed canvas textures on here and you can see that it's got a little bit of canvas texture to it. Um, it's also just looks kind of like gloopy paint. This is how it looks without it. And that's how it looks with. Okay. And so that's the primed canvas. And then I'll show you actually the other ones on this piece here. Um, so you can see this flower here has got some nice texture to it. And I've added that. Let me go ahead and turn it off. So that's how it looks without. And I've added that texture with the add swirl texture down here. So I'll just show you how I did that and just make a new layer. Multiply. And I've got black chosen and oops, make the brush kind of small so I can control it a bit more. You can just add a bit of texture on here if you want it to look particularly textured. And you can do this with any specific areas on your canvas where you want to have a bit more of a focus or you just want to have a bit more texture. And I think for me that looks a bit harsh. So just like with the canvas layers, you can tap this M and then take the opacity down until you're happy with how it looks. So that just gives us a bit of extra texture. However, the brushes do have quite a lot of texture built in. So let's go ahead and move on to the brushes. So that was the canvas and texture. And now we're moving on to the painterly brush set. And I'll go ahead and turn off these other layers and make a new layer so that we can sort of experiment with these. So the first five brushes are the impressionist brushes, and these have a natural color changing ability to them. If you're familiar with my, my alcohol ink brushes, then you will be familiar with this concept. Um, but basically what you can do with these, they have a lot of color built into them. Like there's a natural variation when you just make a stroke with them. You can see that there's a color variation here. Um, but you can also do a secondary color. So I've got a blue and a red chosen. And in order to choose a different secondary color, you can just go, I'm going to go ahead and choose this here. This is my Van Gogh flowers. And these are all based on actual paintings, by the way actual classic paintings. Okay. So let's try it with this gold, golden color here and a blue. So you can, you can just choose your different colors by tapping here and then tapping a color. Okay. So what you can do with the secondary color on all of the impressionist brushes is if you are, if you have your pen just in the normal way, then the, the primary color comes out, but if you tilt it, then the secondary color comes out. So let me just show you with a red and a darker blue. 
You can have a lot of fun with this if you want to have a, a really impressionist looking painting. And the tilt, a lot of people have asked me about this. And what it means by tilt is basically if you have your, your pen like this or like this, this is just the primary color that comes out. But if you really, really tilt it so it's nearly parallel with the screen, that's when the secondary color comes out. Okay, so that was impression that was master impressionist. And swirly impressionist is very similar. It has a texture in built into it like that and choppy strokes is a little bit different because these two have sort of uh, blurry edges so that you can blend them with other brushes fairly easily the choppy strokes looks better i feel when it's clean so it's just got these nice these nice oil sort of strokes to them and um, that one has some clean some clean edges instead but you can still do the tilt thing with this as well so, and after that, we've got Impressionist Multi-Stroke 1 and 2. And these ones are, they come out with different colors. Quite a lot of different colors already built in. And you can still do the tilt thing as well. And these are really good for, you can do them big. And it just looks like you have a lot of nice paint strokes on there. Or you can do them small and really use them for like a an accent or something that just looks looks very impressionist and you can you can get the blending brushes I'll go into that in a minute but you can use the blend this the smudge tool with any of the brushes and then just have a lot of fun sort of mixing these colors in with each other I'll show you that in a minute but just to show you a little bit of how you can use these brushes, um, you can see up close on this piece here, I've used the multi-stroke impressionist brushes quite a lot here, just to add some little areas. And they don't really look, from, from a distance, it's just like with impressionism, from a distance it doesn't really look like individual strokes and colors, but when you get up close it is. So that's why I've called it impressionist um, multi-stroke. So there's, there's two of those. And actually number two is my favorite, I think. But they both work the same way. And then I've also got one called Soft Impressionist, which is just blending in. The colors blend in a little more with each other. They don't have such defined um, boundaries. Okay, so that's the Impressionist brushes. Moving on from that, we have the oil brushes. So there are, there are five of these as well. And the thick flat oil and the thick round oil are very similar, um, but they're just, one of them is flat and one of them is round. Um, and let me just actually tell you about the terminology that I'm using in the rest of these brushes. So when I say thick, I mean something that is really 3D, like really fat paint. Um, and then when I say soft, what I mean by that is that it blends with other colors and it's not going to have edges that stand out. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But basically, this is how the uh, the flat oil works. It, um, it doesn't really blend. You can put it over top of other of other strokes and it will still be defined as its own stroke. And it can sometimes have some fun little colors on the edges um, and look sort of wet and oily. And the round brush is just the same. In fact, the round brush is really probably my favorite brush in this entire set. Basically, I just really love how it looks. It's very, you know, streaky and 3D to me and a lot of fun. Those are the, the, uh, the flat and round oil. The soft oil is not as 3D, but it's great for mixing. So I'll just show you how the mixing works here. It's really nice for just if you lay down some texture with with these ones, for instance, then you can you can have some fun with the soft oil mixing along the edges a little bit. And the same thing with the dry oil, it's just a bit streakier, even streakier than soft oil. 
so you can have a lot of fun, fun with these ones. These are really good for blending effects. Okay. So those are the oil brushes and I'm just really happy with these brushes, honestly. Um, they, they are probably my favorites in this whole set. So go ahead and have a look and see what you think. And so after the oil brushes, we have the acrylic brushes. And let me just pick a color. Okay, so this is just the same, very similar to the thick flat oil and thick round oil. We've got thick flat acrylic, thick round acrylic. And these also are 3D, meant to be streaky, poofy looking fat paint. And they work very similar. They have defined edges. You can, uh, you can put different colors over top of each other and they will not blend. And it works the same way with the round acrylic, except it just has a lot more variation of size and rounded edges. So the soft round acrylic is um, similar, but it's softer. It doesn't have a 3D quality to it and it's really good for blending. And it still has some streakiness to it. The soft flat acrylic, the same thing. Some streakiness, not as 3D, great for blending. And so that leads us to the gesso. I've named these two brushes gesso because they are a bit creamier and a bit chalkier looking than the rest of, of these brushes. And so that's, that's what gesso is. It's a lot uh, more textured. So let me just pick a color. I've got a round version and you can see how creamy that is. These are really good for, for smudging with, but I'll show you that in just a minute. And there's the flat, very similar really love these ones as well. That was really big. So, then after that, we've got the detail brush and the super dry. And for specifically, I haven't said oil or acrylic because these could really work with either. And honestly, you could mix, just because these say oil and these say acrylic, you can mix them with each other. There's no rule against that. Um, so be sure and experiment with that and, and just see what works best for your process. But the detail brush is just more about making details. So if you have to, you know, draw something really small and detailed, but you still want it to look like paint, that's what this brush is for. And then the super dry is just kind of a fun one, really dry looking paint that comes out of this. Okay, and now comes the palette knives. So the palette knives, we've got all the way down to here. We've got a couple, uh, several different varieties and um, it's not as much about the shape, but it's more about the quality of each one. That's why I have so many different varieties. So this first one called a palette knife, it is just a very basic laying down of solid 3D looking color. So you can see it's got, it's really good with these like short strokes like this, laying down different colors. And it's solid, it doesn't blend. It's just good for laying down color like this. And the soft palette knife is similar, but it does blend. So you can see that it picks up color from where it starts off and it blends it outward. So this one is really fun if you just wanna have a lot of color blending going on and you don't wanna change your color that much. So it's gotten quite a bit muddy there actually. <laughs> but um, you know, if you wanna have some color blending in specific areas, that's the one to do. The streaky palette knife is similar, but it's streaky. 
And the same thing with the soft streaky palette knife. It has more blending. It's picking up color from where it starts out. Got a lot of different colors going on within this, the same stroke. And then the, so, the soft pointed palette, um, palette knife is very similar, but it's more blendy. So anyway, you can have a lot of fun with those. Just experiment and see what you like about them. But um, the last two on this list are the metallic paint and metallic strokes. And if you're familiar with my other brush sets, you'll know that the, the rest of these are great all on the same layer. Um, they blend with each other, they interact with each other. You wanna keep, if you want them to interact with each other, just keep them all on the same layer. But the metallics do need their own new layer because they will interact strangely with what's on the layer already if you put them on the same layer. So this is a nice um, empty layer right now. So I'll just show you how this looks. This is my metallic paint. It's fairly similar to one of the brushes in my Gold Rush set, but um, it's just a bit more streaky. And if you want a really, really nice solid gold, you can go to the Renoir River and choose the second to the last golden color over here, and then you've got a really nice gold coming out. And the metallic strokes is just some fun stroke paint stroke texture. I'll actually put this back on so I can show you. This is here over in the corner so you can have kind of a fun, some fun painty effects with this brush. So um, something that I wanted to cover as well is that you can use the smudge tool with most of these brushes, particularly the acrylics and the palette knives and the gesso. So not so much the oil, it looks a little bit funny, some of it, because it has some special blend modes in it. Um, but you can, to use it, all you need to do is just go to the smudge tool instead of the brush tool, tap that, and then make sure that you're on the right uh, brush set right here. And then you can just choose a brush and smudge with that brush. And so what that means is that you, you just move around whatever's on the layer that you're working on rather than putting anything new on the layer. And if you're familiar with my alcohol ink brush set, I've actually made some specific blending brushes that go with that set. I have not done that in this set because they work great with the smudge tool. So um, I'll just show you, uh, one of my favorites with the smudge tool is the flat gesso. And I'm just gonna go to one of my art layers and just kind of show you how it works. You can have a lot of fun with this brush and just drag all the colors. So it's a really fun way to have these streaks come out in different colors, depending on where you start with. You can have a lot of different colors in that streak if you're using the smudge tool. And that was the flat gesso. You can also do this, it looks really great with the acrylic, the flat acrylic, the round acrylic. Oops, that was really big. It can come out really fun some nice, nice juicy brush strokes out of that as well. So this one is a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's really fun to just sort of mix around. You can see I've done a lot of mixing here with this. And this is really where that impressionist multicolored look can come through. So one more thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually create a drop shadow if you want to on some of these brushes. So specifically the Oops, the, um, the thick acrylic or the palette knives. Um, I don't think it really looks good on any of the rest of it. And it's not really necessary because I have built in shadows on these brushes. You can see the darkened edge. So these are all meant to look like they have shadows already and to already have that dimensional quality to them. Um, but if you wanted to go ahead and put an extra shadow on it, so for instance, let's say this, this part right here, we want that to have a bit of extra shadow. Duplicate that layer and then go to the one below it 
tap it again and tap alpha lock. And then you need to have black selected over here. But go ahead and if, as long as you have black selected, go ahead and tap it again and then tap fill layer. So now basically you have a black version of what was above here, right below it. And then you can zoom out, press your arrow here and then tap probably about two taps on the, on the side, whichever side you want the shadow. So I'm just going to go like that two taps. And then if you zoom in, you can see there is a very, very faint shadow behind, um, behind these, these brush strokes. And this is kind of similar to what you will get on art rage, for instance. Um, and I don't think it's really necessary, but if you want it to really stand out, then this is what you can do. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that again. So that was my painterly brush set and I hope that you enjoy it and be sure and let me know if you have any questions or any suggestions for tutorials you wanna see with this brush set. Um, I would be very happy to do that. I know I have a lot of sort of classical painting tutorials planned. Like I would love to do a um, Van Gogh version of the uh, Starry Night, something like that, inspired by that. Um, let me know if you have any ideas or you have any requests and um, I would love to hear from you. But I hope you like it and I hope that this was helpful. Thank you for watching.